All right. Um, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you, Professor Gangli, for the opportunity and to GIPC. Uh, my name is Ravi Bhola and I represent uh, KNS Partners, Intellectual Property Law Firm. Um, my presentation is uh, basically covering four aspects here. Uh, first aspect will basically articulate how industry has made use of AI and the kind of products we are seeing uh, in the marketplace. Um, the second part of my presentation will essentially uh, talk about what kind of IP protections are being sought for these AI-based uh, products. Uh, the third component will talk about the kind of IP litigations we have seen, primarily in US in some parts of Europe, uh, what kind of outcome we had in those cases. And then very quickly about some of the legal issues that will revolve around AI um, in view of the development. So, so when we say AI, we are basically talking about uh, a software product or an algorithm um, which is capable of making intelligent human-like decisions. Now, some of the examples uh, Rajiv uh, highlighted uh, before me. So humanoids, for example, these are all smart AI products. They can talk, they can walk, they can act in a play, they can have long conversations with you, and they will learn during the course of conversations with you. You have various applications. For example, this humanoid called Nadeen can engage with people suffering and going through dementia, where they will remember the conversation that he had with the subject and will help manage some of the disease conditions. Um, I must admit I'm slightly scared of AI because you have all these smart products now which can actually start drafting claims and specifications. So maybe next time around when we have a panel, one of the panelists could actually be a humanoid here uh, talking about what all it can achieve. So Clem is one such product uh, which can do a lot of work that some of us do in our workplace. Um, Watson again has made a whole lot of noise in the last three, four years in particular. So this is, uh, has machine learning capabilities. It has a natural language processing based platform and can do a whole lot of things. Uh, I'm based out of Bangalore and night, right next to my office is Manipal Hospital. And Manipal Hospital is using Watson to identify the right kind of combination of drugs to manage patients suffering from various cancers. So you input a whole lot of data. This AI-based product, Watson, will tell you the right kind of combination of drugs which can make best possible impact on a subject. So it's all very customized. But a whole lot of applications beyond healthcare, be it in terms of financial research, cybersecurity, and a whole lot of other things. Now let's talk about what kind of protections are being sought for these AI-based products. So you have a whole lot of patents being sought. Uh, for example, IBM has got a whole lot of patents uh, around Watson. Um, then you see a lot of organizations seeking design protection for these humanoids and robotics having AI capabilities. Um, let's, let's talk about some of the litigations uh, we have seen. Uh, we haven't really had too many litigations, uh, but whatever little bit that we have seen so far, um, iRobot, um, um, it's one of the leading companies in, in US making uh, robots for various applications. Um, they've been fairly active in the litigation space uh, in US and some parts of Europe, uh, and have been very successful so far. They've been able to enter into some sort of settlements. Uh, but also been able to successfully establish infringement. Um, some of those cases had issues involving patent infringement, uh, copyright infringement, uh, trade dress issues, and stuff like that. We also, some of you must also be aware of the suits that Apple had to face uh, on Siri, and Apple had to settle both those matters uh, involving alleged infringement uh, of some of the patents uh, for its product called Siri. Again, an AI-based product. Now, let's, let's, let's look at, this is the last part of the presentation, which talks about the, some of the issues that we, we can come across. Um, 
part of it Rajiv covered earlier, which is, for example, talking about ownership. Um, one school of thought is that if I am a software developer and I develop this, this, this software, whatever it does, whatever it does, at the end of the day, because I have developed this piece of software, which can achieve a lot of things that even I may have not envisaged. So that's the beauty of AI, right? You input certain basic data, and then you have this smart software, which can do a lot of self-learning from ecosystem and generate a lot of output that even the creator of AI would have never envisaged. So what happens to the product which is created by this AI tool? Uh, who is the owner? So one school of thought, simple, straightforward, looking at uh, the scenario is to say the developer. I am the developer. I should own the product also, which is created by AI. But that things may change in future. For example, when you have scenarios where a lot of these humanoids uh, would learn from each other. Uh, what will you do when these humanoids learn from each other, communicate with each other, uh, are able to showcase emotions, um, and, and, and whether our law at this point in time is equipped to address some of those issues or not. Also comes the issue of inventorship, for example. So even if the ownership is sitting with me as an as a inventor or the employee or an employer, the issue comes in that... Uh, Sorry. The issue comes in that if, if I haven't really developed the product, how can I be an author? Right? Uh, what happens to the moral rights associated with it when the AI-based product uses a lot of existing data and creates a finished product? So, and thereby comes the issue of liability. So while in the course of developing various products, this AI platform ends up infringing existing IP of a whole lot of other organizations, who has the liability in such issues, uh, in such situations? I mean, we don't really have an answer right now. The law will evolve with time. Right now, the, the way the legal framework is established, uh, we can safely say that the, the liability and the ownership in such scenarios is essentially sitting uh, with, the, with the organization or the developer. But as AI gets smarter and more independent, uh, the law may also have to evolve with time to address some of those new challenges. So with this, I conclude my presentation. And thank you all for your patience. Thanks.